Welcome back, everybody, to Banjo-Kazooie. We only have two worlds left in the game now, and we're heading off to World 8 today, which is a pretty famous world. It is infamous for being the most difficult world in the whole game, as well as the least fun. That said, I'm still going to try to make this an enjoyable video for you guys to watch, and I'm going to try to have fun on this level. Because it's not, like, awful. It's just frustrating. Anyhow. We cleared Mad Monster Mansion last time, and I know we got the secret code for the Red Feathers cheat. We're actually not going to activate that just yet, because believe it or not, we can actually get to the next Cheeto code before entering World 8. And now, as you see, because we hit the water level switch in the Mad Monster Mansion, like, secret hut coffin area, the water level in this room has increased. So we, we walk through a cauldron, and then we come out, and we're underwater. Somehow. I don't know. Water level's still too low to do anything there. But in this room, things are different. Now we can get up to this part of the port. So this is the entrance to World 8. Ow! I thought you guys didn't appear until after we entered World 8. Whoops. So we can... Oh, well. <laughs> Maybe we'll head off to a party. Yeah. So now we can take a good look around this room. So there's a cauldron up there. And then this is pretty hard to see, but actually... We really can't see it. There's a cave way up top in this room. It's not very easy to see. Now, there is actually something you can kind of screw up. At this point, we can raise the water level again, but if we do, we actually miss out on being able to do something else. So instead of finding the next water level switch, we're going to swim back here to where the Mad Monster Mansion entrance opener was. Because if you'll remember, there was a grate in here. My next world is the hardest yet, and you will fail on that, I'll bet. I'm actually willing to take that bet, uh, Grunty, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to fail at the world as well. Yeah, so now the water level in here is just high enough that we can reach this grid. And we can rat tat wrap it open, because if the water level gets raised anymore, this will be completely underwater and you won't be able to break it. Very well in the tunnel. And bro. You can break open that grate as well. And here's the entrance opener to World 8. Welcome to Rusty Bucket Bay. Oh yeah. If you thought Clanker's Cavern was annoying and difficult, oh, you've seen nothing yet. So now we can enter that world if we want, but there's more stuff to do in this room before we're going to do that. So I think this is all that the game really wants you to do, is to open up the World 8 and then enter it and then do nothing else in this room except maybe getting the cauldron. But there's another way to raise the water level again. And I found it on my first playthrough immediately. I bet it's supposed to be like a super hidden, like hard to get place, but it really isn't. So we're gonna high jump up here, and this is the other blue cauldron. Yeah, so there's a rareware crate over here. With a precise double jump, actually not even that precise in a double jump, we can get here and raise the water level yet again. Yeah, so this raises all the way up to that tunnel. So as a kid, I thought, yeah, you raise up the water level, that's how you get to the tunnel and open up Rusty Bucket Bay. But then you can't break the grate. Uh, that connects to the Mad Monster Mansion entrance. And this is why it's a problem if you do that. We're gonna swim all the way back down to the Mad Monster Mansion entrance opener again. And now that the water level is even higher, there's yet another thing we can do in this room. And this is arguably the best kept secret of the game. <laughs> because it took me several playthroughs before I even found this. So 
now we can reach the 1-up. Which we actually might need. I said we can reach the 1-up. Good! I thought there was something we could do in here. Am I just mistaken? I thought there was another switch up here if I could change the water level yet again. Tootie's fate is looking grim. It's because her brothers did it. That's rude. Oh no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. The water level switch is not here. Okay, so you don't have to break open that grate if you don't want to, but it's... It's like a nice little shortcut, I suppose. Okay, no, the, the actual... Here, I'll cut back to where the switch is. Alright, so the water level switch is actually in this room. This crystal cave room. Because now that the water level's gone up again, there's more we can do. We can break open this grate. Top of here is the final water level switch. Oh, nice. <laughs> However, this one is a timed one. It'll only stay up for 30 seconds. So now what we're going to do is swim back to the Rusty Bucket Bay lobby. That's not the Rusty Bucket Bay lobby. Oh, and that just instant... Wow. Okay, that just instantly gets rid of the extra water. Wow, okay. So that immediately made the water level go down. My bad. Swim through the monster mouth. Now that we're in the lobby, we're going to swim all the way up as high as we can over here. There's an extremely well-hidden entrance to a cave. And it's Cheeto again. Hey, Cheeto. Very bird getting good at finding Cheeto. So another spell they shall have. That traitor book has pushed its luck. So in the burning fire, I'll chuck. Find Cheeto, which won't. Cove, you must enter on sandcastle floor and treasure trove. Cove is gold feathers. Alright, so now what we're going to do is now we're going to go to treasure trove cove and enter those two codes. And I will see- oh, ah, hi. I will see you all there. One other thing I forgot to do is we forgot to get the Jiggy that mad the, for the, the Mad Monster Mansion, uh, which switch. So this one can actually be a little bit tricky. What we have to do is jump off of her hat and then do a double jump onto her this nose. Rat a tat rap with a glass eye and then grab the G. Now we're gonna go to Treasure Trove Cove. We are in the sand castle once again. Let's get rid of this guy. Alright. So first, the second Geo page, which is Red Feathers. Baron Bird, get 100 red feathers. 100 maximum now is... All my feathers! It makes me sick! Fly to me, your butt, I'll kick! Alright, well, we're not even done with the codes, Grunty. I'm just gonna do a reset just in case it was like, Oh no, you already typed in the other code, you gotta leave. Alright, now gold feathers. This is the one you really want, because <laughs> gold feathers are in short supply. Oh, 
20 gold feathers, you get new maximum 20s. Gold feathers, you may have 20, but bruises, you'll still get plenty. <laughs> Never stop rhyming, Grunty. Alright, Treasure Trove Cove, we will probably not be coming back to you until the bonus video is so sweet. Now we can actually go to Rusty Bucket Bay, and holy cow, Rusty Bucket Bay might actually take three videos to get through. Especially depending on how much I die in there, because I'm guessing I'm going to die at least once or twice. It is a very dangerous world. The nice thing is we can now take the blue cauldrons to warp straight there. Alright, off we go to Rusty Bucket Bay. Oh boy. For one, it has my least favorite music in the game. So it's a harbor with a giant ship called the Rusty Bucket on it. And I mean, that in and of itself is kind of a cool world theme. The problem is the water in the harbor. So I'll just show off what the gimmick is. My oily water in you plunge. You'll lose air while in that gunge. So yeah, we're gonna lose air even just swimming on the surface of this oily water. If we go underwater, under the scum, you'll breathe your last. Cause air is used twice as fast. Not fun. Not fun at all. Now, very first thing we're going to do, normally I would explore the outside of the ship before going, no. I want to minimize the amount of tough stuff I have to repeat, and there's a part of this level that is extraordinarily dangerous that I want to get over with as soon as possible. These are life preservers, we can just rat and tap grab them, it's pretty easy. First thing I want to do is make sure I go to the right place, because I often forget. <laughs> Let's get all these notes here. I can't remember if this is the front of the ship or the back of the ship. Okay, see that jiggy behind those propellers? That's the toughest jiggy to get in the whole game. We're gonna try to get that first. Because it is extremely dangerous. Use those crates in order to get your air back, but you'll have to stand on them for a few seconds before your air will replenish. Just thought I'd throw that out there. I know I'm skipping over a whole lot of stuff, but again, I just want to get that jiggy behind the propellers as soon as possible. Because holy cow, it is extremely easy to just instantly die getting to that, and if you do, you've got to get all those notes again. I don't want to have to get the notes again unless I'm in real danger. Anyhow, this is an interesting enemy. This is a evil pipe. They are completely invincible, and if you get too close, they're going to take a lunge at you. Even, even invulnerability feathers will not kill them. And you know which ones are the evil ones because they have a whole bunch of those, like, gashes on them. Whereas regular pipes only have one gash. Or maybe two if you include the one at the end. And the normal pipes you can actually jump in. This is where we want to go. This is a sailor. Aha! Yeah, so this is where we want to go first. In this tailpipe at the front of the ship, or actually the back of the ship, because of the tail, the pipe, the fan blades at the back. We're gonna press this switch. These fans are going to slow down. This is essential in order to get to that jiggy. Anyhow, we're gonna do that, and now we're going to go into the rusty bucket inner workings, which is the most dangerous room in the whole game. It is the most difficult platforming challenge in the whole game, and even one small misstep will send you plummeting into instant death. And in this game, instant death is really punishing. So to get to the inner workings, go to this tailpipe here. You can either bash or rat tat wrap that door open. Welcome to the inner workings. You will probably be here a whole lot. That's a long fall, so let's just do that. First thing we can do, you can see that little gap above, the little hole above this door. If we high jump in there, we get a hollow honeycomb piece. We only have three left in the whole game. This room is bloody dangerous. 
There are all these rotating platforms, gears, it's just a platforming challenge, and we are above a bottomless pit. You fall in, you die. Get the stuff in here first, so that way if you die, you don't have to repeat a whole lot. These pipes are the worst. Because they'll be if you if you touch them while they're spinning like this, you're dead. You gotta wait for them to stop spinning, but when they stop spinning, they tend to no. Okay, well this one was really nice too. Oh my! You saw how fast that restarted back up as well. And that's one mumbo token I think I can live without. And the camera is not helpful in this room. This switch here, that's going to slow down those fan blades at the back of the rusty bucket. However, there's another switch at the opposite end of the room that we have to get to. And that's why we had to go to that place uh, in the tailpipe to slow down those blades, because we need to do that in order to get to this game. That's another really tricky jiggy to reach. Like, even the, la the last world is pretty tough, but it's not get anywhere close to being as tough as this. Or anything. We're to slow down, double jump through it, holy cow. Thank goodness they give you an extra life here, because you will probably need it. And now what's annoying is, we kind of want to time this, because once we hit this second fan blade, we're going to be on a strict time limit to get to those fan blades, because they're only going to be stopped for a short time. So we're going to hit it now. And now they're going to stop completely so we can snatch the jiggy inside. Now hopefully the camera will work for us. High jump up there. I do not give a rip about those mumbo tokens. But thankfully this actually stops everything in the air working so we don't have to wait on it. Well, it stops the pipes anyways. We'll hover down to here. We're gonna wait for this to be back in the right position. Talon trot mode. Get in, we get out. This is this is a tight time limit, and this is why I'm like I can't remember which side of the boat has those propellers. Because if you go to the wrong side of the boat, you you, you can't. Get there. You'll have to go back to the inner means. Slow down the fans again, and that's another extremely dangerous trip. All right, we're over here. It's not getting ready to leave the port. It is it is just docked in the port. All right, and now we get to swim in the oil water. So hopefully we won't drown as well. Right. Swim back here. Please curse the jiggy. Cool. We grab the jiggy. Let's get out. Because those fan blades will like insta kill you if they get the chance. Alright. First try. I'm really happy about that. Because I'm normally really bad in the end of this room. Maybe at the end of the level, if I'm feeling daring enough, I'll go back and get those two mumbo tokens. But there are more Mumbo Tokens in the game than you need, and if you have to skip a few Mumbo Tokens, those are some good ones to skip. Anyhow, now we can explore in more detail. So this is a TNT box. You can shoot long range of eggs, and they will blow up. Otherwise, if you get close to them, they will try uh, Kamikaze in the and you don't want that. Now we're going to have to do, see that pink Jinjo down there. We're going to do a swim here, grab him and get him. And again, oil. Don't swim in oil water. You see how fast our air supply is going out. Oh no, don't get, no, 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 don't get stuck. And the worst part is once you get to the surface, it doesn't even refill your air. You gotta hurry to that crate. Yeah, see, we had to stand on the crate for a few seconds before our air got filled. However, I don't think your air depletes while you're on the crate. Thank goodness for small favors. Anyhow, before we go back onto that ship, the rusty bucket, we're going to explore the outside. Which is normally what I recommend doing if it for the fact that the inner work is very easy for you to die in. Toll 2, shoot two eggs in there. And it makes a bridge for us. How nice. Uh, thanks, camera. <laughs> This is another tricky mumbo token to get because you kind of got to. Yes! 
You've got to do the high jump, but you've got to do it while moving, so you kind of slide off just a little bit and then do the high jump. Very tricky. <laughs> but thankfully, <laughs> your punishment for screwing up is not instant death. Alright, so now you can see there's a yellow window here, but then on the other side of this window, it's clear. We can stand on this without falling down and do a beat buster to destroy it. We are inside this shack. Here's our Jiggy. Go, huh? Alright, so I want to get that one up. Just for swag. Go, <laughs> what? Don't really care about the eggs. Although this is a level where it can deplete your eggs quite a bit. And the reason for that is those TNT bar uh, barrels, eggs are like the only reliable way to kill them other than Wonder Wing and Vulnerability. Also kind of weird thing is the, even if you swim on the surface out, it forces you underwater. So, that's kind of annoying. Oh well. What you gonna do? That's kind of my slogan for life. Well, what you gonna do? You can't control what happens to you, but you can control how you react to it. And I think that's how you really show how mature you are. <laughs> okay, uh, so there's a yellow Jinjo over here. And guess what, guys? Oh. Snacker's back! <laughs> oh, he doesn't talk to us. How is Snacker not dying in this world? Another very well hidden secret on this level, you see that tiny little, really well concealed hole in the side of the building there? Yeah, we're going into there. That is extremely well hidden. There's some really well hidden secrets in this uh, game. And even though it looks clear, it's still oil water, so... Oh no, evil life preserver. Oh no, mango card. I can't believe I just referenced that. I am shooting myself. Alright, button over here. <laughs> they call them lifesavers. These guys a life ender. And wow, that switch was literally taken right out of Gobi's Alley. That kind of clashes with the rusty bucket atmosphere. Yeah, that makes the other Hollow Honey Cup disappear. I feel like every level, like one, I feel like pretty much every level, one Hollow Honeycomb piece is pretty easy to find, and the other one is like really difficult to find. Honestly, if the one it. Okay, now we're gonna swim out. I'm trying to think of exceptions, like. Uh, Bubble Goop Swamp, they were both pretty easy to find. Oh, hi, Snacker! Don't eat me. Alright, we can't actually jump out of here, we gotta swim out through this hole. Thankfully, Snacker's too dumb to swim out with us. And this is why I really recommend doing the double jump to go across the surface of the water, because that'll help preserve your energy a little better. And if there's ever a level you don't want to drown on, it's this one. Yeah, this is I really like the music in this game. Not on this level. This level's just like a cacophony of harbor noises. I don't like it. This level sucks. <laughs> That's kind of what I hear. You do some double jumps across here, get a Momo token, and then the green key. By the way, this level, this level is a very clear anti-pollution uh, message. Can you tell? Ouch! Oh wow, you can actually swim underwater in here and lose air. And you're not that. What are they doing in this harbor? Holy cow! Alright. Alright. Four ends. It's the second 
have here. Before we go across that, we have this crane. Well, oh, actually, which crane is this? I can't see. Okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, we can, we can do this now. So there's a ladder up here, and then this button that says up, we can do a breakable dash into. And that's gonna up, up, up raise the cage around that GD, which is on the up opposite end of the ship that we went last time. We wanna climb up here and then hurry as hard, as hard, as fast as we can get that GD. Yeah! Thankfully the crane doesn't lower and trap us. It'll lower, but it won't lower so much that it'll trap. Now it will! <laughs> Thank you.